Uh, actually, we have a, a guest speaker coming today, and they're not here yet. <laughs> so uh, we will move right along, and uh, hopefully they'll find their way here. It's actually uh, Boyd Smith. Uh, he's a representative of the Gideons, and he'll be speaking to us today. He's from the State College area. And guess what? I think I just found our, our visitor. Uh, who got here after Karen. <laughs> so there he is. Good morning, sir. We're glad you found us. <laughs> you are too, right? <laughs> Boy, nice to meet you. Pleasure. Still got some folks coming in. I'm going to go ahead with some announcements. I was handed this sign-up sheet. Uh, there will be a sign-up sheet out on the table in the narthex. Uh, this is a fundraiser for Brian Kleinpeter. Many of you know we've been uh, praying for Brian uh, in the past. We haven't really done anything in terms of a fundraiser for Brian. Um, of course, he has a church that he attends and so forth. But uh, we've tried to be there for him in, in different situations. And um, Angie, Angie Auker really felt moved to do a fundraiser for Brian. And of course they live in the same community just a, a little few doors away from one another down in Kramer. Uh, so there's going to be a, a sandwich fundraiser, ham and cheese or turkey and cheese. We'll have the sign-up sheets out in the narthex for you uh, to sign up and you can help uh, the family out in this way with their ongoing uh, medical bills and so forth, uh, travel expenses back and forth to Hershey uh, after his bone marrow transplant and so forth. So it's a good opportunity to be able to help Brian and his family out. <clears throat> as you know, today, and as I explained last week, now our guest speaker doesn't know this yet because he, <laughs> he just got here. We already received a love offering for you last week for the Gideons. So, and we switched things around because um, we're having uh, a love offering today for a family from our church to help with their medical bills. And we set it up for this particular Sunday. So we moved Gideon offering to last week. So it's already in hand. Um, it, you, don't have to, you don't have to wait. The, the, the check's not, doesn't have to go in the mail. Um, anyhow, for the offering today, and I believe each of you received an envelope when you came in, that envelope, unless you indicate on your regular offering envelope a gift for the Wait family. Um, and you can just put the Waits or Wait family on your own envelope uh, or use the special envelope uh, that you received when you came in. And all of that money then will go to the Wait family, Bob and Kathy, uh, to help them with their, with their medical expenses. So please, um, Please give as generously, generously as you possibly can. I know the, the family will greatly appreciate it. Um, as you know, this week, uh, we get down to the nitty gritty here with uh, the Robin Mark event. Uh, that is sold out. We have no tickets, zero left. There are no spots left for the conference. That's been filled for two weeks. Um, I did get more requests for tickets. Um, we were able to get two people tickets that wouldn't have been able to come except somebody else wasn't able to come that had tickets, so we already got that taken care of. But in the meantime, got more requests for tickets. If there's anybody that can't be here for the evening concert, there's a couple that will, at the very last minute, come if there's tickets available. So I hate for anybody to miss it, but we are at, uh, well, beyond capacity. I'll just say that. So, uh, but if you know of someone that has tickets, and at the, at, even if it's up to the last minute, can't make it on Tuesday, let us know. We'll make this contact with this family so that they could, so that they could come. And I don't know what else might come between now and Tuesday. That's just what's, what's there now. So um, thank you for your support in all of that, uh, as well as your prayers for this very special day that's coming up. Um, and continue to keep us in prayer as we, as we set up. And on that note, if there's anyone after this service, because I just got a phone call this morning, that some of the stuff we need for the concert is going to be arriving at 1230. I know we're, meeting, we're planning on meeting at 630 tonight. Any volunteers who can come and help set up tables, chairs, and what have you all over the building, uh, we can use help. 
But I, now that they're coming at 12.30 with, with some equipment, not all of it, uh, we need to clear this whole area off up here, every single thing. So if I could just get a couple people uh, who could meet me right after this service. I know we'll try not to disturb Leroy's class and we'll quietly move these things uh, out of the way so that when they come at 1230 there'll be room for, for what they need to do. Um, thank you for, for that. Carl. Yes. For the help that's coming through the kitchen on Tuesday. Yes. I would like if they come through the steel door that comes directly into the hallway into the kitchen. Okay. The okay. Um, if you didn't hear, Debbie, for the ladies who are coming to, or, or men who are coming to help with the dinner for Tuesday, um, which the dinner will start at 5.30, but I know preparations will be going on throughout the day. The conference downstairs, uh, the first session downstairs, won't be till 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So if you're arriving after 3 o'clock, Debbie's asking if you could come in the steel door that brings you back the hallway directly into the kitchen, not the regular uh, fellowship hall doors, but the single steel door that brings you uh, past the pantry and into the kitchen. If you would use that, then, then the folks in the seminar won't be hearing doors opening and closing uh, with people coming in. So uh, we'll try, maybe we could put a sign on that door and let them, let them know too. And again, thank you, uh, Debbie and all the ladies, everyone who's helping with that dinner to make this uh, event everything it, it possibly can be. Okay, so if, if there's a turkey, I didn't get that part now. People, if they're making turkeys, pick them up. They're in the fridge. Oh, okay. If you're roasting a turkey, you can pick up your turkey in the fridge in the kitchen. Okay, gotcha. Take it home with you and bring it back. <laughs> Cooked. <laughs> Roasted. Okay. Any, any other announcements that need to be made? Okay, 7 o'clock, Friday morning, the Joyce Meyer event uh, at Hershey. Uh, they're gonna, folks are going to be leaving from here. You could just talk to Marge uh, if you think you could be coming so that maybe you can make plans with the transportation and so forth. Okay. Anything else? The schedule this week is pretty clear, mainly because of the event we're having on Tuesday. So there are, are no other um, meetings going on except for that trip to, to Joyce Meyer on Friday, which will be a great way to cap off uh, this, this, this coming week. Anyone else? Okay, do we have our basket? Um, Lorraine, is Lorraine back there? No, do we have our basket this morning? Is Lorraine back there? Oh, you have it, Phyllis. Come on, come on down. Okay, well thank you for that. Got some anniversaries being celebrated this week. Um, Rick and Don Smith and uh, Jim and Wanda Zerby are here also this morning. Rick and Don aren't able to be here. But, uh, and, you, and we're going to ask you to pick up your goodies out in the narthex um, at, at uh, the conclusion of the service. Also for birthdays, uh, Heather Schilling, Casey Went, uh, Beth Keister, and Anna Mitchell. Uh, happy birthday uh, in advance to all of you who are celebrating birthdays this week. And I know, oh, we have another birthday girl. And when is your birthday, hon? Today, well, happy birthday to you. Awesome. Uh, we'll have to get that in our, in our church records here. I know we have at least one first time visitor. Uh, and this would be Boyd Smith, Phyllis. So meet Boyd Smith. Cookies, I'll, I'll be back. You'll be back. <laughs> hey, there you go. Any other first time visitors with us this morning before Phyllis heads off into the wild blue yonder? Uh, okay, the rest of you folks celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, please see Phyllis for your cookies uh, after the service. Okay, let's stand then uh, for our call to worship.
I rejoice with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The Lord is the great God. He is the greatest king. In his hands are the depths of the earth. The mountain peaks belong to him and the sea also, for he made them. Let's bow our heads in prayer. God, you are great, and it is great to be in your house this morning. We just thank you, Father, for all the love and the care, the compassion, the mercy, the grace that you have shown to each and every one of us in so many ways. And we come together today, Lord, to just praise your name, to lift you up, to give you honor, honor for which you are surely due, Lord. Forgive us for those times, Lord, when we haven't honored your name as we should. Forgive us, Lord, when we've had opportunities to bring glory to you when we haven't. You surely are gracious and merciful. And so we come humbly, Lord, knowing uh, we are weak, but also knowing at the same time that in you we are strong. And it's in you that we have the power to live life as you ordained life to be. And so, Lord, lift us up as we lift up your name, as we proclaim your greatness, as we proclaim your goodness. Speak to our hearts today, Lord. Draw us ever closer, Lord, to you. For we ask these things in the precious, most wonderful name of all names, the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, your Son, and everybody said, Amen and Amen. We're going to sing um, a medley of songs that uh, we've done this one time before, uh, this particular medley. So let's lift up our voices in the sanctuary and give the Lord praise as we sing Amazing Grace to start off with. Here we go. Lord, we bless you that you're a God of unity. And Lord, you say in your word that where brothers dwell in unity, you command a blessing. Father, we want to receive a blessing from your hand, a blessing of grace and mercy, a blessing of peace and love, Lord. Lord, a blessing that we don't deserve, but that we receive because we're looked after and watched over by a Father God who is in his very essence, love.
not by might. Before you sit down, would you reach out to your neighbor? Get a hold of this new guy that's visiting with us today. Let him know you're glad he's here this morning. <laughs> Good morning, boy. God bless you. Welcome. Did you, you, did you find this okay? Oh, it was an interesting Okay, I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. I had my, uh, my son's tournament baseball team. <laughs> Good Her husband's a Gideon. Oh, okay. he, in fact, he's handling the camera oh. back there. Oh, yeah. And this is a Gideon wife. This is Gideon Auxiliary here, <laughs> Theta there. Sanner. Gary Sanner's my husband. Yeah.
that's so pushed it. Oh. 30 miles. Oh, really? Oh, my goodness. Well, we are uh, grateful uh, that Boyd found his way here today after an already busy morning. Uh, <laughs> We're going to take time, as we do each Sunday, uh, to lift up any prayer concerns, um, joys, um, whatever the Lord has put on your heart. If there's a testimony, certainly, um, please share. Kevin has microphone as Brian's his helper today, so um, they can come to you with anything that you'd like to lift up. Uh, good news this morning is Lois Herbster, who had been in the hospital um, pretty much all week, is now home. Had a good day yesterday. Uh, so please keep Lois Herbster uh, in your prayers. I understand, too, and I may have mentioned this the other week, that Betty Mitchell is um, back in the nursing home at Penn Lutheran. And now Ray Stone Road is not at home, but in the nursing home as well. So please keep Betty and Ray uh, both in, in your prayers. They're both at Penn Lutheran. Do you have any prayer concerns you'd like to lift up today? Uh, first of all, I have a friend um, Evelyn Weichel has, is having problems. They can't find out what's wrong with her. So I'd like to put her on the prayer list. And um, <clears throat> I got a call last night from my sister-in-law. Um, my brother turned toward the worst again. And today they're going to unplug him. So uh, I ask for prayers for the girls, the girls and her. Yes. Thank you, Phyllis. <laughs> and Phyllis. And Phyllis, yes. I'd like to have prayer for my wife, Esther. She has to go for more tests on Tuesday. Okay. So prayers for Esther Kreider. Um, on a personal note, I'd just like to thank you all for your prayers and concerns for my recovery. But um, our, we found out yesterday that our neighbors, uh, the Eli Hostetler family, had a young one, had a baby on Friday, and it's not doing very well at all. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to lift them up. Thanks, John. Um, I'd like, like you to keep uh, Mary Lou uh, in prayer today. Mary Lou, is that Thursday, did you say? You're, you'll be going to Hershey for surgery. Uh, so please keep Mary Lou uh, in your prayers. Yes. Uh, we'll keep Jeanette in your prayers. Yes. Um, I hope you've been doing that, uh, keeping Jeanette uh, Reich in your prayers. Uh, she's here faithfully every single Sunday uh, to help uh, be a part of our, our worship. And please keep Jeanette in prayer. Other, other prayer concerns? Amen. Amen. It was only a few years ago, when, and we were sitting in a, a very warm sanctuary <laughs> uh, just on the other side of those walls. So uh, this is what a blessing uh, the Lord has provided for us. Peter. I want to thank everybody for the prayers. I took my stress test on Monday, and I passed it with flying colors. So they still don't know what caused it, but... I feel great. Prayer is awesome, isn't it? Uh, and our God answers prayer. Yeah, I'd like to have prayer for Paul. He had a pretty bad sore throat this morning. But also I would like if you would lift up Darlene Delverman. She's had uh, a long haul with her, uh, well, a lot of things. And she just really needs prayer to heal for healing. Thank you, Anna. I had put my uh, two grandchildren on the prayer list yesterday. Uh, 
The one went to the eye doctor, the one went to the dentist the same day. The one that went to the eye doctor, they found something behind her eye. They don't know for sure what that is, so just pray that it's nothing. <laughs> and, um, and her name's Courtney, Courtney McCowan. And also Cameron McCowan went to the dentist and he has a lump on his tongue. And the dentist uh, said it looks suspicious. They're going to remove that and uh, biopsy it. So please pray for their healing. Thank you. I'll continue prayer for you, McKnight. Uh, his kidneys are shutting down. They're only working 30%. Thank you for your prayers. Also remember Jim Wright from your town. He has a tumor in his brain. You don't give him three months to live in his time to call the other day. Uh, and possibly he's already there. The last name again? Reich. Reich. Okay, Jim. Okay, thank you. Um, every prayer that's lifted up in this sanctuary, or any sanctuary, uh, is important. Sometimes we have the tendency to think that something minor, perhaps, uh, medically, isn't as important as something that might be considered more troublesome or more, dang more dangerous or what have you. But every prayer, and I believe you know that to be true, every prayer is um, very important. And I received, uh, and all I can say is it's an unspoken prayer request. Um, can't share any details with you. Uh, but that um, this unspoken request is just as important as any other. And uh, I would just ask you to pray for the folks who sent me that request uh, in the mail this past week. Other prayer concerns? Remember Gary Bass. He's been having a lot of problems. He's been going to the emergency room. He can't breathe sometimes and he is on oxygen, but he's struggling with that. And former, he had pneumonia, like a walking pneumonia. So keep him in prayers. Thank you. Thank you, Faye. Okay. okay. Thank you, Clint. Kathy, how's Heather doing? Just continued prayer for Heather. She had a doctor appointment with the heart doctor this week, and he was pleased how her medicine's working. So, but she's having problems with her blood sugar. So we have to go up this week again. So just remember her. Well, let's go before the Lord uh, in our time of community prayer where we all begin to intercede and to uh, petition the Lord for healing or for mercy, for help, because our Lord is our help in time of trouble. Amen. He's dependable. He's trustworthy. He's more than able to do whatever his people ask. So let's pray with, with that encouragement to know that our God is more than able. Let's pray. You may pray as we do each week, standing, sitting, uh, kneeling, however uh, the Lord leads you. You are so good, so kind, Lord. We pray, Lord, for this church family, for all the things that are, all the challenges, all the tests that, that, that come our way, Lord. We, we know we can depend on you. And I just pray, Lord, that each and every name that's been lifted up here today. Whether, whether Pastor Carvel heard it clearly or not, I know, I know you did, Lord. And that's all that matters. Because you are a healer. You are the grace giver. You are the, the lover of our souls, as we say, Lord. We 
you know, that your inner soul is real, it's genuine. There's nothing artificial, Lord, about you. And so we lift up our voices to you, Lord, because there is none like you. Hear our prayers, Lord. I pray for our families, our children, our grandchildren, Lord. I pray for Karen. I pray for my mom, Lord. I pray for my brothers and my sister, Lord, and their families. We pray for safety for Ron today as he takes down that tree, Lord. Just all sorts of things. And you're in the midst of everything, Lord. I just praise you that we can come before you, Lord, that we can bow our knee to you, Lord. Know that you hear every single word, even when we don't speak out loud, Lord. You hear, you hear the voice of our mind speaking. Lord. That gives us great assurance, Father. And great hope. In Jesus' name. Now let us join our voices together as we pray the prayer our Lord Jesus has taught us to pray when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. going to uh, ask our ushers to come forward at this time that they might re receive your gifts and your tithes and um, I pray that you'll continue to pray along with your giving of your gifts uh, to the Waite family that you'll continue to pray for them um, that continued healing would come and uh, an encouragement also. Let's stand together and sing, Thank You, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving so rich and free.
Let us pray. Oh God, you are the giver of all good things. Our help in time of trouble, our peace, our joy, our strength. Lord, thank you for calling us to yourself. For ministering to us in such a powerful way through your Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray that folks will continue to respond to you by faith. That lives will be transformed. Disciples made and your love proclaimed. Lord, use us and these gifts that are now before you. So that your church might boast about Christ. Not ourselves, Lord, but about Christ. About all he's done. And we just thank you, Father, for the opportunity to minister in his name and to advance your kingdom here on earth. So to you be the glory, Lord, for all that your church says and does. In Jesus' name we pray. God's people said. Amen. Amen. Please, please be seated. I'm going to ask the... Uh, kids to come down for a moment. Is there children's church this morning? Nikki. Okay. Thank you very much. Got kids? Send them down. Daniel, what a change in outfits from last week. <laughs> I was calling Reverend Dan last week. You, you look comfortable though today. What do you think? You feel comfortable? Good. Good. Good morning, Ben. Got to work with Ben. Was that this week, Carolyn? Um, all, yeah, it was this week, Monday. Got to work with Ben on his scouting project. He's got all kinds of irons in the fire, don't you? Yeah. Good morning. How are you guys down there? Good? Okay. Well, <clears throat> new girls over here like bookends. But you all look so nice this morning and so happy. We, you're, uh, you're all red is right. That's for sure. Do you know we have a special guest with us today? God? Right here. Jesus? Oh, that guy. Well, <laughs> you can take notes. You can remember these. You won't even have to. You'll remember this for a long time. Oh, that guy. <laughs> Mr. Smith, oh, how many Mr. Smiths do we have here today? At least five, at least five other Mr. Smiths, I believe. Maybe, maybe more. Um, well, Mr. Smith comes to us from State College, Pennsylvania, not too far from here. And he represents a ministry that many of our people here are also involved with. It's called the Gideon Ministry. And do you know what, who can tell me what Gideons do? Uh, if you're a member of the, if you're, if you're part of the Gideon ministry, who can tell me what the Gideons do? Uh, be preachers. They what? Be preachers. Preachers? Preachers. You think he, that guy can preach? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that guy. Yes, I think he can preach. I think they do preach uh, in a lot of ways, and, but they're also probably best known for the distribution of Bibles. They take Bibles to people, they take them to uh, offices, and I'm not going to steal um, Mr. Smith's thunder this morning, but they do so much with the distribution of Bibles, getting Bibles into the hands of people all over the world. Chinese. Are you Chinese? No, you're not Chinese. Of course not. And 
Are you girls Americans? Yeah. <laughs> Daisy, you're an American, I can tell you that. But they distribute Bibles here in America and all around the whole world. And what I want to ask you this morning is, what do you do? Because that, that ministry is telling other people about Jesus and all that Jesus has done for us to bring us salvation, to save us from our sins. What are we doing? What can we do in school? Somebody help me out. What can we... Learn. What's that? Learn about stuff. We can learn about stuff? Yes, and you do that, don't you? Because the more you learn, the more you can share, the more you can give away, the more you can talk to other people about Jesus. Isn't that right, Michael? Mm-hmm. Wide awake? Yes, almost. Kind of. Okay. Um, what kind of things can we do to tell other people about Jesus? Can you give somebody a Bible? You can give them a Bible? Absolutely. You can give them a Bible. You can share with them about Jesus, right? Anything else? How else can you tell people? Do you think saying to someone, can I pray for you? Might have something to say to them about uh, and, your faith. So that you can go to church. You can go to. You can invite people to church, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Lots of things you guys and girls can do to tell other people about Jesus, just as the Gideons do. It doesn't have to just be big people. You guys, God is calling you too. Yeah, He calls children to Himself and to share the good news of Jesus. I have no idea what your plans are for Children's Church today or what your lesson is, uh, but you're going to be going there in a minute. And I'm just so thankful for our Sunday schools, for our Children's Church, for our Rocket Club, for Vacation Bible School, for all those ways that you can learn more and more about Jesus, and so can other children. Why don't you bring a friend along next time? What do you think? Would that be a good idea? All right, you like that idea. Good. So does Pastor Carvel. I like that idea. Let's ask. Let's pray right now who that friend might be that you're going to bring to church with you so they can learn about Jesus. Okay? Let's pray right now. Let's bow our heads. God, we thank you that you're already speaking to these young people's hearts that they would be excited to bring a friend to your house, Lord to worship you, to praise you, to learn more about you and about your wonderful son, Jesus. Uh, and so, Lord, during this time of uh, children's church, uh, continue to speak to their hearts and open their minds up to more of what you would have for them. And we're just looking forward to the great fruit that is going to come from these lives that are seated here before me right now and, and before you, Lord. And we just know that you're... You've got a smile on your face as you look down and see these children and, um, and know that they love you, Lord, as I pray that we all do. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. And all God's kids said, amen. 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 See you later. You can go with, you can go with Nikki. <sighs> yes. Well, are you okay, honey? Are you all right? Are you okay? Oh, did you fall down here? Do you want me to carry? Can I carry you? Can I? She's okay, Mom. It's okay. It's okay. There's Mom. Oh, okay. Before the other guy, before Mr. Smith gets a chance to talk to you, uh, I thought it would be good. This is going to be... Um, Pretty much, except for those of you that are here on Tuesday, it'll be pretty much the, the, the last of the emphasis on our guest and his friends that are coming from Northern Ireland. Uh, but I thought you could watch a brief video. It's an interview. Uh, there's uh, some really wonderful theology, uh, cross theology. Uh, in this video, so you, it's not just a video for the sake of listening to it and saying, oh, he seems like a pretty nice guy. Uh, he actually throws in a little teaching uh, here about the, what I would call the theology of the cross. Uh, so sit back, 
uh, Tuesday night, you'll be doing a lot of standing. If you thought that was a lot of standing in, in our medley this morning, um, bring something to help you stand longer <laughs> on Tuesday night, because uh, it's going to be worship uh, like we've never, most likely, ever experienced before. So, can we roll the video, Scott? And uh, this is Robin Mark it's being on the album, interviewed. Days of Elijah. It's had a big impact on the Christian worship scene internationally. What was it that motivated you to write that song? Yeah, it, it, it really has. It was, uh, I mean, there's a story behind it, and it's on my website www.robinmark.com and so you, you can go on that online there and look at the album page and it'll say Days of Elijah's story and uh, but I think for, for me the nature of the song was that it, it, it's a foreshadowing song there's there's a, a a type of theology called foreshadowing it's best described by uh, an old Baptist pastor and theologian that I have a great amount of time for, lived in the Victorian era, called F.B. Meyer. And he says, if you can imagine the sun coming up in the morning, and if there's a large edifice, a large building, or a large geological feature, the sun shines on it and casts a shadow way into the future, into the evening, if you like, or forward. But as the day progresses and you come to noon, then that shadow decreases and disappears. And as the sun then goes on towards evening, it casts a shadow back towards the morning. And he said it's like the cross. You know, what happened at Calvary is such a, a massive, majestic event that it's as if the sun shines its, its impact right into the future and also right into the past. And so my understanding of that is that the, the people in the Old Testament uh, lived lives that foreshadowed Christ and were chosen by God to foreshadow and to be a picture of who Jesus was. You know, and despite all their failings and all their shortcomings. And so men like Elijah and Moses and David and Ezekiel, all those uh, Old Testament stories point towards Christ and we're living in the good of Christ's salvation and what he's done in these days. And so that's the nature of the song. And something about that has, has impacted people. Uh, you know, lots of people think there's a prophetic edge to it, but I, I think it's just a song of hope. It's a song of an assurance that, that God is for the world and all history is his. And uh, God is for the, the church and the people of the world. And he's expressed that through his son, Christ. Still we are the voice in the desert crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on clouds, shining like sun. Your ministry now is worldwide and you've led worship all over the world. Are you ever tempted to move base? We spend a summer in, in uh, the United States now and uh, it, you know the weather's lovely and the sun shines and uh, you know they're very nice people and, and uh, sometimes you come back to, to Belfast and it's grey and dull and the rain's falling and you, you get a little tempted but I suppose God called me here and uh, something of this city as I said earlier on has impacted me and this is where I feel I have to work out the calling in, in my life. So despite the temptation and seeing some very beautiful parts all over the world, I think I just have to keep coming back here to my, to my base, to my family, to my church, to where I am. So do I guess that's it. <laughs> Give you a little, a little feel for uh, Robin for his ministry. Uh, of course, he is he is based in Belfast, which is where his home is. He grew up there in the midst of what they called the Troubles, uh, the the ongoing conflict between that's that's pretty much over now uh, with between Protestants and Catholics and all the killings. They call that the, the troubles. It lasted for years and years. Robin grew up in that time frame, so it's impacted his life uh, in, a, in a major way. 
So um, you get to learn a little bit more about him as he speaks in three different sessions on Tuesday. And, uh, and then ministers to us in song along with his band from Northern Ireland Tuesday evening. So those of you who are coming, it's going to be a day and a night you're never going to forget. And uh, it's just awesome to have this opportunity uh, that he is going to come. Uh, not because he's known all over the world, but because he is a man of God, the real, the real McCoy, so to speak, with a wonderful ministry that he's willing to share, even with small churches, not just big crowds like you saw in that video. So um, come prepared to worship and to celebrate what God is doing. Now, on that note, the other guy, Boy, will you give Boyd a Snyder Connie welcome here once? <laughs> God bless you. It's all yours. I'm going to give you this. I was a very bad man. <laughs> Truer words were probably never spoken. Uh, Nick was in fact a very bad man. He came to this country, settled in New York City from his native Jamaica, and he became very good at being very bad. And uh, it's, it's funny, you, you listen to Nick now, and a uh, little different, way different, but like us all, he, he pulls out his sin scalpel. I was into the shaking down to clubs. I was into the, I was into the women's. I was into the getting drunk. And he pulls out the sin scalpel. And he goes, but I wasn't into the drugs. I was this, but I wasn't this. One of his many stays in jail, Nick flopped back on his cot, smacked his head on a Gideon placed Bible. And he was about to fling it across his cell when he was just overwhelmed with the sensation to open that Bible. And he started to read. And he started to weep, a story we hear very often, a lot of weeping. The words weren't unfamiliar to Nick. His mother and grandmother read Nick the Bible all through his youth. And Nick strayed, and he strayed pretty far. Now, this is a point I want to make sure you hear. Nick's mother and grandmother never gave up praying for him daily. Daily. Praying, praying, praying. And it happened. Nick's head and a Gideon Place Bible came together at just the right time. Nick is now an associate pastor of his church in New York City. Given his gang connections, he's, he's a thug's thug. He's allowed in areas of New York City, in certain gang groups where no one else can go. So sometimes you ask, why did, Lord, why, do you, why are you taking me this direction? Or why are you taking that person that direction? Maybe there's a purpose further down the road that we're maybe a foreshadowing. Very often we're, we're called an Isaiah 5511 ministry. And uh, if I would, I'll, I'll share this with you. Because not everybody is, is familiar with Isaiah 5511. So shall my word that goes forth, uh, goes forth from my mouth, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I uh, please, and it shall prosper in the things for which I sent it. What does that mean? What does that mean for us in sharing the gospel? I don't throw out a lot of statistics, uh, but I will throw out a few important numbers. 97.4%. If you, uh, no, most of the students left, but if you were a student, 97.4 is a pretty good grade. However, if you're an evangelical Christian, that gives you the amount of folks who do not share their faith. Take a moment. That's uh, 3.2. Well, excuse me, 2.6% of evangelical Christians share their faith. That's where Gideon stand in the gap. Now, another statistic. 
The average non-believer needs to hear the gospel message six to seven times before they come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Think about that one. How many of you here who've come to the Lord had to hear that over and over and over? How many of us who are sharing the word have that in mind? Or are we looking at it as a one, or one and done prospect? How many of us have shared the word with someone or know someone who, well, I'll, I'll, I'll share with them again? Do you think Satan might be pushing back a little hard if you're the fourth, fifth, or sixth? But what happens if we're the seventh? Wow, brought him to Christ. No, Holy Spirit brought him to Christ. I would ask you, when you share the word, please share the word often and with a soft heart. That does not mean a soft message. That means a soft heart. If you're the first, make it easier for the second. If you're the third, make it easier for the fourth. A soft heart. Encourage. How often do we hear a challenge? I'm here to encourage. Encourage you to reach out. Reach out from your comfort zone and pray when you share the word. That is what Gideons do. That's, it's a very, very simple yardstick we measure our actions by. We are to bring men and women, boys and girls, to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ through the distribution of God's word. This is it. This is what we have. This is all we need. God's word. How many, anybody, oops, sorry, anybody familiar with this? <laughs> hotel Bible. How many of you have seen a Gideon Hotel Bible? Recently I was speaking in the northern Poconos and I had a shock, almost like the, that other guy. Um, I said, hey, does anybody recognize this? I had three people hold up hotel Bibles. <laughs> and by the way, you are allowed to take them if you need them. Um, if, if the Gideon ministry was only hotel Bibles, it would be a ministry worthy of support. I could go on for hours, I won't, I won't go on for I promise, on folks who have come to the Lord through hotel Bibles, intervened in suicide. I think a lot of people don't realize a lot of folks go to hotels to commit suicide and a lot of times those suicides are interrupted by a Gideon Place Bible. I mentioned a Gideon Place Bible in prison and I, I mention uh, uh, prisons quite a bit. Uh, my wife works in a federal prison. Anybody here a CO? A corrections officer? Okay, we can't talk quite as freely that he's, no. <laughs> tough, tough position, isn't it? Kind of get a hard shell. Member of my church, CO, tough, tough as nails. And uh, before he came to the Lord, he was even tougher. Um, he waited two and a half years to tell me the story. They were clearing out a, a cell at, at Rockview, and a longtime inmate had a Gideon Place Bible, and in every white space, with engineer perfect handwriting, had written notes from all of his Bible studies. This so fascinated a non-believing CO that he took that Bible and brought it back to his desk. And, and it just fascinated him. It fascinated him how this man could write all of that. Do you know what started settling in after he read that for a few days? Yes, he came to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Let me go back to Isaiah 55. So shall my word, goes forth from my mouth, shall not return to me void. Who would have guessed? Who would have guessed a prison place Bible to an inmate would end up in the hands of a CEO and lead him to the Lord. We're busy around the world. You see me as an individual Gideon. What I feel standing here is about 300,000 of my brothers and sisters behind me around the world. We are in 194 countries. We publish Bibles in 93 or 94 languages now. We're in more places than any other ministry. In fact, very often in these newly opened areas, we are the, the mechanism that gets 
the Bibles into, uh, into those areas. Now, I don't think anybody shot at me coming up Possum, is it Possum Road? MapQuest took me up Possum Road. Um, <laughs> I, as I'm driving up, I'm going, beautiful drive. I don't know if I'll make it to the church on time. Um, but nobody shot at me for being a Christian. Nobody burned down my house for being there. It doesn't like the magnet. It doesn't like the magnet in my little badge. Um, nobody shot at me, burned. There we go. There. Oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. That worked. Nobody drove me out of my place of work because I was a Christian. However, we have Gideons all over the world in very, very dangerous places. And I would ask you, please pray for the Gideons daily. As you read your Bible, we have people who, who will make bookmarks that say Gideons. And as you open your Bible to that bookmark, pray for the Gideons around the world. We appreciate the love offering as the pastor said, came in last week. We appreciate that. That helps fund the Bibles. That 100% of that goes to Bibles. Gideons pay for the running of the Gideons. Whenever you use our Gideon cards, which are out in your narthex, the Gideon cards, we're not trying to put Hallmark out of business. It's triple giving and triple blessing. The giver, the receiver, and the receiver of the Bibles that, that, that the funds go to purchase. Where we are around the world, it's amazing. In the areas, uh, we have, uh, in the Muslim areas, uh, there's tremendous change and growth going on. We witnessed it at Penn State. We do an annual distribution every fall. And no, we don't give out the date ahead of time. Uh, we, every fall, we distribute at Penn State and this past year, for the first time, we had Muslims coming up to us accepting Bibles, sitting on the bus bench reading the Bibles. Do you realize in their home countries, very often they could get them killed for apostasy? They're sitting there reading. The only ones who didn't, the Indonesians, because they're a very radicalized sect. Uh, but even there, there's we have a... a a very brave Gideon in Indonesia walked up to the largest jihadist training camp. It looks like a luxury hotel. About 3,000 jihadists are in training there. Who's there? <laughs> it's a Gideon. I want to speak to your camp director. And they laughed. You ever seen a cat play with a mouse? They went, sure, come on in. This man came back week after week after week to meet with the camp director. And they got into some wonderful discussions. And after a year of discussions, the camp director had to leave his position because he had come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Do you realize those two men could have disappeared inside that camp? Police would have never come. But he is now not only has come to Christ, he's also now a Gideon. He lost his job, he lost his wife, he lost his family. He always has uncles who are capable and, and willing to kill him. But guess what? His wife, a year later, came to Christ as well. Now their family is healing. Even in the, the, some of the darkest reaches of this world, Gideons are at work. So I ask you, please, please pray. What are the barriers to sharing the word? How many here are uncomfortable sharing the word? Yeah, usually it's me holding my hand up. We have fears, don't we? We do have fears. What are the, those fears? Participate. Go ahead, shout it out. What are our fears to sharing the gospel? Rejection. Yes. Rejection, that's a big one. Any? Ridicule. How about one of my favorites? I don't know enough about the Bible. Don't worry. The Holy Spirit. Be in prayer. The Holy Spirit will use you. As, as Gideons, we're just vessels. We're not something special. We're not on a higher plateau. 
We're vessels. We pray. The Holy Spirit guides us. If you have someone in front of you, you say, I know I need to share the word. Lord, lead me. You will be led. You will be led. One of the big barriers, Romans 3.23, I believe is misread by a lot of people. A lot of you would know it by heart. For some have sinned. No, that doesn't sound right, does it? Everybody but me has sinned. Now that's not it. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's one of our biggest barriers. What are we up against? We're all sinners. We all need to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. What exactly, and this is one, and when I spoke last week, they asked, with all the craziness going on in the world, they asked me to be, which I don't normally do, but I did, be slightly topical. Ephesians 6.12 stepped right out. What are we up against? Truly, as believers, what are we up against? For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. There you go. I think that says it in a nutshell. What are we up against? That's it. That is it. I want to encourage you. If you are prayerfully led to become a Gideon, and I, I love being in a church with multiple Gideons. It feels like I have company. <laughs> prayerfully see if you are led to become a Gideon. If you are, Please see your pastor. That is the only way you can become a Gideon. As a church, good standing church member, recommended by your pastor. We're local no matter where we are. Whether we're here in the Middleburg area or on the far side of the earth. We're local no matter where we are. And we're always tied to our local churches. So I would ask you, please be in prayer for the Gideons. Be in prayer if the Gideons are for you. Some people say, well, we, it'll take me away from my church. Usually the Gideons are some of the most active church members. We always find time to wedge it in. It's not a, we don't beat anybody over the head. It's, it's to your, what you're called to do. I want to thank you for this time. This time is precious. I would normally say in the pulpit, but I'm standing here. <laughs> this is precious time. And as Gideons, we appreciate sharing this. We appreciate the freedom to share our message with you. As someone said earlier, thank God we have a place to worship, to come to each and every day, every week. Please be in prayer. Let, let me just tell you, the Gideons appreciate this freedom. And may God bless you all richly. Thank you so much. I know you folks have been very generous givers to the Gideons over the years, and I'm, I'm guessing that part of the reason for that is because you know so many folks from our congregation are involved. You know the kind of uh, dedicated servants that they are to the Lord first, uh, but to the work of the Gideons, uh, whether it would be um, the men involved or the auxiliary, the women involved. And it's just, uh, it's an amazing ministry. Um, what I was actually thinking about while Boyd was speaking, because we already took that offering last week, there, there may be some of you here today that weren't here last uh, Sunday and weren't able to contribute uh, to the, the Gideon's ministry in that way. So if that's something... Um, 
over the next week or two weeks, and I know we've got other special offerings coming up then with uh, Mission Sunday for Christian radio stations uh, next Sunday and the following Sunday, Building Fund Sunday, there's always something. But if the Lord is leading you to contribute to the Gideons, you can just mark that on your envelope any, any Sunday, and that, that gift will go to the Gideon ministry. So... Um, just because you missed it last week doesn't mean you missed it, uh, that you missed the opportunity because uh, these folks are on the, the highways and byways uh, while we're sleeping at night. Somebody on the other side of the world is traveling to some, to somewhere uh, representing the Lord and the ministry of the Gideons. So you have, a, you have an opportunity that's year round. And I know we've taken, it, we've taken advantage of that many times. I, I mean, taken good advantage uh, of our, our love for the Gideon uh, ministry, the various offerings we've taken over the years, uh, and now even at Christmas and Easter, instead of flowers up front, an opportunity to purchase Bibles for the Gideons, just all sorts of different ways uh, that, uh, that you've been a part of that ministry. And um, those 300,000, along with that other guy uh, here, they really appreciate. I think that's obvious today by what, by what Boyd has shared. So uh, I told him he can come back anytime. Uh, you in agreement with me on that? Yeah, I thought so. And we'll get you another way other than Possum Hollow Road or whatever that was. <laughs> so um, keep the, the, the ministry of the Gideons, obviously, in your prayers as Boyd uh, challenged you to do and uh, and we'll just continue to watch what God is doing in these in, 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 by his amazing Holy Spirit at work uh, all over the world whether it's in a jail cell or a, or a, a hotel room uh, or on a sidewalk uh, or a bench by the bus stop whatever whatever it might be um, God is at work he is alive amen and uh, and we're his hands and feet that statistic did shock me. 97.4 or 3, was it 4? Percent of evangelicals don't share their faith. We need to turn that around and uh, know that the Lord, as He promises us, is with us. Let's bow our heads in prayer. God, we thank you for, for Boyd, uh, for his ministry here today to us, sharing uh, not just what the Gideons are doing, Lord, but what you're doing through them. And it is always, Lord, um, a privilege to know that we can be a part of that wonderful ministry. Um, you've called us into this a life-saving work, Lord, that we would share with others what you have done for us. That we would share with others your word, knowing that it will not return void, but that it will do what it was intended to do, Lord. So speak to our hearts, Lord, encourage us and uh, embolden us, Lord, uh, where that is needed so that we might be faithful uh, to share this good news of Jesus Christ with anyone we meet, wherever that might be, whatever the circumstances might be. We just want you, Lord, to have all the glory and praise. It's part of our worship. It's what we do 24-7. Help us to realize that more and more, Father. That you've given us your son, yes. Um, for our own good. But for the good of the whole world. To you be the praise and glory, Father. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. We're going to uh, stand now and uh, sing our closing him and so if you'll join me uh, I don't know why it is but when we have a Gideon representative here this song
This hymn always jumps out at me. Maybe it's because at the Gideon banquets that they have uh, for pastors every year, uh, you can almost always count on this song being sung, but I love this hymn, and I think it's powerful, and it's all about what uh, God is calling us all to do and to remind other folks that it's Jesus who saves. Let's sing it together, Jesus Saves. Would you say amen? amen? Would you say amen again? Amen. Would you say amen again? Amen. Jesus saves. Amen. Thank you, Boyd, for being here with us. It is a battle, and it's a spiritual one. It begins right here in our own hearts. It's that spiritual battle that can sometimes keep us from uttering a word of truth, uttering a word of faith. Um, but as Boyd has so truthfully shared with you. God is with you. He'll give you the words. So as we go today, let it be known that God is with you. God is with me in all that we do, all that we say, because it's going to be said and done for his glory. Amen? Amen. 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 God bless you. We are in ministry together, Sing disciples for Jesus Christ, empowered by God's Holy Spirit and relying fully on God's word. We stand firm in our mission as a community of faith bound together in Christ to proclaim the love of God to all people.